Welcome to Satisfactory Update 6. My name is Nilaus and this is a showcase of this magnificent build. I call it the Lighthouse and it's going to take care of all of our battery needs for the future base. It is going to generate build 600 batteries per minute and this video showcase will do three things or attempt to do three things so let me know if that works it'll be first i will have a fly through so you can see the awesomeness of this base because i think there are so many cool things in this base that it's uh it's kind of hard to show that so the first thing was just we'll be just looking that's what we're doing now just looking at the coolness then the second part will be i will be showing you how to make a round tower uh, so that you can uh, you can build it yourself. Uh, I've had a lot of questions while uh, building this on stream, so uh, I thought it would be prudent to sh give that a showcase as well. Uh, the third part of it will be the actual factory part, where I'll be explaining what this factory does, how I uh, how I built it, and uh, how it just fits in on each of the different layers that you are just sort of getting a glimpse at here. So it'll be a comb combination of the, the aesthetics parts and uh, and and also an effective factory. That's the idea. This build is, of course, uh, built over on Twitch. I stream Twitch now every week. It is on Satisfactory Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time at Twitch TV slash Nilaus. So if you want to be part of future designs and the idea generation, come on over to that location. And uh, that is where all of the ideas from this, they came from my Twitch chat. So uh, it's super amazing. And of course, this is about a 20 to 30 hour build that I'm now doing a compilation of. So if you find that interesting, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you can keep up with more cool builds. Let's dive into the actual uh, first part of it, how to do a round tower. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of the origin of this uh, build. And uh, let's just first have a look at where it is. I know a lot of people always ask, where is it? It's right here in the Northern part of the map by the fjord. There are some coal locations between the boring barren uh, desert starting point and the interesting Northern, start, Northern forest starting point. And uh, what I usually started with, and I did all the calculations of how much I needed of each, which will be the last part of this space, but uh, or the last part of this showcase. But um, the first part was I started building the first layer, and then on a big on a big square grid, and kind of regretted it because I've done that square grid a few times, and I wanted to do something interesting. So I decided I wanted to do my first circular build. This is by no means uh, something I have invented but it's something that I will be showing you how to do. So we are going to be starting with a center square. This is in the middle of the grid. I have put a power pole below it so I can actually hover. And the way you do it is you start from here and you go to the zooping mode and you go all the way out. If you want to be even more accurate then I think we'd actually be doing, I'd be doing one in each direction first. That's probably easier and then out because you need to get 11 out in each direction there and that's easier to get 10 and then get an extra one so now we have all that is the perimeter it had why does it have to be 11 from the center square that's because by that point the minimum amount you rotate will equal to one uh, one location so if you go and build one at top here and then you hold control and you turn the scroll wheel then it rotates a tiny bit so we built that, we built the ones on the side, and then I can again drag 10 out of this location, I can drag 10 out in this location, I can drag 10 out in this location, and 10 out, and that's it. And now at this point, what are we gonna do? We are simply going out and deleting what we just built. There. Everything except the out of, out of, one here there so we keep the outer one and then we also can build it for the one we had built before and yeah now i'm going to do it one more time it's going to go here go here a whole control rotate one more set this and then go 10 out go 10 out 10 out or sorry it's yeah we go one out and then we go 10 out so that's going to be 11 in total and i can then delete and let's go out here and look at what it looks like if we are going out all the way to the end here then what we have is we have a very very close match here this is the gap between the two which is going to be nothing and of course they have some z level fighting and that's there's just nothing to do about that that's just a it's a feature. 
Uh, and then from here, we can actually just build it all the way around. It doesn't take that much time once you get into the habit. Uh, let's have a look at it when, when it's uh, completely done. And this is now the completed circle. It looks really nice all the way around. And we can then start on the next part of this circle. The next part of the circle is actually just to build up some uh, locations here. Uh, we can then build walls as high, as low as you want. But now it will be a very, very close to round building. And it will, for all intents and purposes, be round. There, and we can just build all of that. Then from the outside, it'll look round. You can do glass, you can do whatever you want. Um, on the inside, what you should be aware of is that it's only... Let's remove this and this. This is the only one that is aligned to the same grid as as the building down here. So keep that in mind. And this is also why I built these uh, grids at this location. So that I would be not only just reminded, but also use that as a fixture for each of the floors. Because I don't want the floors... Uh, to have this sea level fighting uh, that they just tend to have here and if you drag these if you drag these all the way in then it gets really difficult to build anything so i would propose and i think it looks really cool to have the idea that you have all of this have a square in the middle and keep on the square grid and then have the outer lines as round as you want and then we can jump back to the actual building and then i'm going to be walking through how to actually build well, actually, first I'm going to show you some of the more uh, interesting things up top, how I did that and uh, how they they actually fit really nice at different sort of uh, locations here. As we go all the way to the top, we're going to be looking at how I designed this part here. So what I wanted to have at this point is uh, I wanted, first of all, I wanted to have a tribute to chaos because, I mean, we have an eight eight sided uh, thing so of course we need to attribute to chaos because that just makes sense um, i wanted this lighthouse to have a location out here where we could sort of walk around interesting with those colors um yeah so where they where we could walk around and just have a have a look but i wanted also to have these cannons going out so i next now have eight potential directions where i can shoot cannons at and th that works absolutely wonderful uh, this is then i've marked it this is uh, back to the sulfur location, or and this is to my hub. So if I jump in there, I go to the hub. I can also go to my plastic build over here. Uh, this is for plastic, rubber, and also for the uh, bauxite mine. And this one, this is just north. We haven't built anything there, but that is a, a super nice and interesting location. We can just jump into the red forest if we feel so inclined. Uh, up here, what I'm just taking is I am taking the cardinal, the cardinal directions here the north east west south these ones are bringing in here to this location but i'm also taking the other ones the the middle ones and that just gets us a nice option for hitting north west north west but also northwest um and then we go further up so what i wanted to do here was i wanted to make sure that it uh, it had a nice smooth curve in so what i just built out here is just just as we did uh, in the early parts i just built this in here and you can see how much they overlap with each other but it actually works out really nicely and then i left it at a location here uh how much do we have they have one two three the reason why i left it at one two three locations and then i have a eight sided because it exactly fits if you have from the middle we have our middle keystone and then we go one two three outside and then it can go one two three to the side and then we have a very very nice build of an octagon up here at the top. I am using this octagon to make light panels because it is a lighthouse uh, as I as I wanted to. Uh, up here at the very top, we have just a little uh, thing. I want to pretty much always, uh, this is something we have started working on. If I build a tower over here, we have these towers. I thought these were, were tall towers. Oh no, they're not. Not compared to this one. This tower is incredibly tall and we built a uh, radar tower on top both for for just uh, for looks but also for convenience because now we can see that th this location and if i could just hover over that we could sort of get a view around our base yeah and i think that's a really nice thing to get a get a nice view of our base uh, what we are also doing uh, here is we it is actually a factory so this is going to be the only output that is a roboport 
because what this whole thing is designing for is just to make a lot of batteries and batteries they will just will have drones coming up here landing picking up batteries going out to all of the drone ports that i will eventually have all over the map i hope uh, we might need to build more drone ports just uh, for convenience but uh, that's easy to do we can add four of those around uh, around the center we could add another one here it is deliberately made three wide so that it fits perfectly with a drone port now We've uh, looked at these things, uh, by the way, uh, I've also set this one up, not that I really need it, but I wanted to make sure that we could uh, have a have a lighthouse that lights up blue if we want to, or if we are, uh, we are the tower in Old Town, then we can also uh, light it up green for if we are going to war. There we go. And so that is uh, what you can... What I've just put in here, we'll, we'll keep it back at the yellow one, just because uh, we don't want anyone to, to get lost. Now, as we uh, progress, the next thing I'd want to, to take a look at is actually all the way down here. We are going to zoom down here. And uh, actually, I think there's a better way. The best, best way of doing this is actually falling. We can drop down this one, but it's falling is the best way to get down. Look at that. And I do really like this uh, attachment here. And as we go down here, we can now go out here and this will go into the third part. Actually looking at it from a factory perspective. So from a factory perspective, this is uh, what we are going to do. Uh, we are uh, not actually getting a lot of things in. We are using the classic battery. Here, the two recipes for battery. There's the awful one, the default one, or the good one, the classic battery. That's uh, all solids, and solids are just easier. Now, this is if you've been following this series on YouTube or on Twitch, you will see that things are sort of making sense because what do we have here? We have plastic, and I am going to use a lot of plastic and we just built some time ago a plast gigantic pl plastic build, and that's now coming in handy here. Then we built a large al alclad aluminium sheets factory, and that is also coming in handy because we're going to be using that exclusively for the construction of batteries. Then on top of that, we have some sulfur, and sulfur is just something we mine out there. And we have some uh, wire, and I'm going to use iron wire because we just built this on top of an iron location, and with a tier 3 miner you can easily get all the stuff so i'm going to be using iron wire and then that means the first step the first step is actually the last step we want to figure out the size of the build and i've decided to 600 batteries per minute so that's 10 per second and that should definitely be enough for all of all of our drones no matter how many drones we have then they should always become able to come in here and top up on uh, on drones or top up on uh, on batteries as they need it this requires 900 sulfur so two belts 1050 sheets well that's uh that's exactly what we have for this tower this tower is building 1080 sheets and that means everything from that sheet uh, from that location is going by train over to this location the next part is the plastic we have uh, built this plastic over here and there's uh, we draw 1200 of those into this location that should not be a problem we built this 600 times uh, four so that's a uh, 2000 400 and we just draw half of it in here that's good because we're also going to need plastic for other things and then of course the wire i decided to do the wire from the iron wire that means i need 1000 iron ingots 1000 iron ingots using the refinery build is only 540 iron ore plus a bit of a splash of water and that means yeah and that means i can get like 16 plus 80 plus 20. now i was considering making this in a modular build so that it would basically be up upscaling this to to six uh, to twenty and basically say one plus uh, something um, plus four plus one. That could be an option, but that would mean it would be 10, 20 floors high, and that just didn't like that. Then it would be like more. You, you can build it modular, but I wanted to do it this way for well, for uh, maybe unknown reasons, maybe logical reasons. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the bottom. That seems like a good place to start. We're going to start here. This is a Mark III miner, and it's set up to mine as much as we need. Uh, this will just go in. We'll go on the inside, and we'll just flow down here. We're going to start at the bottom. So the only thing that comes in is the iron coming in here, into the middle, spreading out to 16 refineries here. This is very much my standard build in terms of uh, of how I, uh, how I built this. Just getting in the middle, branching it out. Here we have the Oops, uh, the water coming in. The water is coming out from these two locations out there. Just bringing those two in and getting us all we need. We're dragging it underneath. Can we just have a look underneath? Yes, we can. It's not particularly interesting. We have a pump. Go up here. And we always, uh, well, pretty much always, we started using these frames around here. 
this is the very simple way of making power. <clears throat> it also allows me to build power very early in the build so that I can use the hovercraft to, uh, to build the rest of it. So as soon as we know what the location are, how many of these, I'll build these, and then I'll build a frame around it so we can get some power, and then I can float around when I attach all of these things. So coming in here on the Mark II pipe, splitting into each side, it's all good. And then on either side, we have outbound. We have 500 iron ingots on this line going up, and we have 500 iron ingots on the other side going up. So let's get up here to the first level. So I take one of them going to this floor, and I take the other one going to this floor. Now this is where it gets a bit uh, more complicated because I have decided that I want, if we look up, uh, I want four of the manufacturers at each floor. That means I need five floors. Five floors is never really a good idea to uh, to build, but uh, that means we need to make have these two floors of constructors getting into five floors, which is means that each floor must be servicing two and a half of the manufacturer floors. So I split it out here. This is a giant build, building uh, iron wire coming out here. How many do we have here? One, two, yeah, that's uh, eight, I think. Yeah, it must be eight. So 16 of these, and we're just gonna do 16 times 22.5. That is 360 on this belt. So I get 360, 360. Uh, and over here is also 360. That goes into the first. This one goes into, hmm, let's call it the last. And uh, the middle one here, I only have eight of those because that's all I can consume with my 500. So this one is only gonna be 1800. But that's not a problem as we move up to the next floor, hmm, which is gonna need to get in here so we can get the power. And going over. Now I have exactly the same, and that means this is gonna go out on the belt. This is the one from the below, that was the next one. The one from below, the next one, and the middle one here, which was the half welt from below, 180, it gets combined with the 180 per minute here. And that means if we go out to this location, we now have five belts coming out, each with 360, perfectly matched for each floor. And it just looks wonderful, I think. The next part is uh, everything else is coming in from trains. So what I do on the train side is out here. I have the trains coming in. They will be just trying to empty. This is uh, weird that is not really wanting to empty that one. Uh, that looks like a little bug. Maybe someone made a little bug here. Maybe someone forgot to put a thing in there. That could be, right? Like It could very much be that someone forgot to put that in. And therefore it's uh, not really working. Yeah, well, uh, now we know. And that will fix itself. I think it'll fix it up. So anyway, um, we are here getting sulfur coming in uh, from our sulfur mine. We are getting plastic from the plastic mine. No, no, no. We're getting plastic from the plastic location. We're getting aluminum sheets from the aluminum sheet factory over here. And the plastic factory is the one that we got all the way over there. We can see it. It's gigantic and it's awesome. And if you want to see that, then we have a separate build for that. Then we get it out here on two lines and if you think this looks weird and uncharacteristic for me that these are uh, uh, yeah um, not parallel then that's because this is round and that means they are uh, uh, orthogonal perpendicular to the surface of the uh, of the sphere or the cylinder and that means they go out here it also means that if i look at this this goes very very neatly just into the location here and it just looks absolutely amazing that it comes out and then goes in here and I'm gonna need two of each because it's 900 sulfur it's 1200 plastic and it's 1050 uh, aluminium sheets now stuff like this it's just for show I also have uh, service ladders on the outside I just felt that uh, I wanted to break up the monotony of uh, all this uh, this line around here just goes all the way around so it can pick me up if uh, if needed then as we go in here back in here we can see that I have now I'm gonna be taking the top one and just going up uh, so the first three floors will be serviced by the lower belts lower belt, lower belt they go in and basically at this point they branch half of it half of it goes into this floor and half of it moves on it'll self-correct because it's and it only has to be a third of it and now we've actually stopped uh, everything has stopped moving uh, I am just gonna fix that and we'll continue and things are moving again as they should be it just looks nicer when we have a factory that's actually moving and we can see things are being pushed up and they're also gonna be drawn in. Each of these five lines go into a separate floor. All we have here is five, four different inputs raised at one level going in. And we have a alternate battery building 30 per minute. So this level here is gonna be making 120 
per minute. And uh, all we need to do here is then we can go up, go out here, and each floor will be completely identical except for the small minor mistakes that I I'm undoubtedly have made here and there. And that goes up. And basically what I want to show is that the first three are serviced by the inner belt and the last two by the outer belt. Should be okay because we're drawing it evenly from all stations. And then the only thing that's different is at the top floor, we are, uh, let's see, let's see, let the second top floor, we are going to be showing you how it works on the outside. So each level here is making 120 batteries that will merge into the belt here. This centralized belt that comes up has collected it from previously and moves further up as well. Up here at the top floor, we have the same thing. But in this case, we now go up to this little glass area and it has a, a bit of a storage here. This is the reason why it gets stuck. And we have a glass door. Like we can also make this go out into a an overflow box, but I think that I um, I want my I want my battery to either be working 100% or idle, because I have all the other things going into to overflow boxes if I need to. And this one I'm going to be. This is the core of my future base because everything from now on will be drone based in the great ecology that we are going to work on next. And so here's the top floor and all we need to do is bring it into a box. We bring it up. And what is important about this is that we, of course, bring it into the location, but that we also make sure that we feed batteries into itself so that it can actually service itself. Now, I have a specific uh, way of doing all of my drone ports and this, uh, this one will not have any drones because it'll be available to all other drones that will come over here, pick up the batteries and redistribute it to all other factories. Each factory will have its own dedicated a battery requisition drone so that I should not have a drone from here. Another alternative is to have a single drone here that flies to each of your factory, but that would mean that you would have to come back here and switch it up. And at some point it simply cannot keep up with the, uh, the demand. So it's much better to have each factory have a battery requester drone. And therefore this must be idle and open for, for, for any drone to come in and they will just queue up as, as that is needed. And that basically just uh, concludes all of our, factory of course that we don't have anything uh, anything built here that's requesting all the drones but trust me that is the next thing of course uh, as you can see these builds they take forever to build but uh, i am building this uh, casually every sunday at uh, for a satisfactory sunday on twitch and uh, i hope you want to join it it's uh, at 8 p.m central european time at twitch tv slash needles and we can uh, we'll be building it and once a build is ready for showcase then i'll be making this kind of showcase here on uh, youtube just to uh, to sort of show the cool things that you can build in this game and uh, the sort of combining what i hope to be an aesthetic and interesting build together with a, an efficient uh, factory that we are uh, hopefully is what you are expecting from the channel so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you if you have then uh, be sure to hit the like button uh, to follow the channel uh, subscribe and of course uh, consider coming over to twitch if you uh, want to see more and if you want to go the extra mile well i do have a patron that uh, i really appreciate when uh, people are supporting me on patreon so thank you very much for watching until next time take care and as always stay effective